Hi, my name is Andrew, and a lot of you have been asking about the, my Tesla coil project. What exactly does a Tesla coil do, and what is its purpose? The Tesla coil was invented by a man named Nikola Tesla back in the early 1900s. He was a Serbian inventor who later came to America to continue his career. Um, he had a dream of wireless power. Instead of having the power lines and the high tension lines which you see today, he had a dream of Tesla towers, and these towers would be huge, oversized Tesla coils capable of transmitting electricity wirelessly all throughout the regions and to your house. Now what the Tesla coil does is it's essentially a radio tower for electricity. Electrical power that we use today is at 60 hertz. 60 hertz power means that it comes in, it's alternating current, so it comes in on and off 60, 60 times a second. So you have, if you can imagine that as fluid, it comes in and it goes back, it goes in, back. It does this 60 times a second. And radio waves are essentially the same thing. They're just not heavy current. They're, they are electricity, but they're in the kilohertz range, multiple thousands of times a second. It's oscillating. And what the Tesla coil can do is it can take the high current lines that would come in from the transformers and the power factors. Uh, it would take that and step it up to radio frequency. So you have your 60 hertz, it comes into the coil, and then the coil pulses it out as radio waves. And his dream would have these distributed all throughout the areas, and your house would have an antenna, and you would tune your house's antenna to your local power station's frequency. And by doing this, you'd pick up wireless power that they'd be transmitting. Now his dream you know, was never fully fulfilled. He did have one large tower that was his last get-go, a three-story tall tower that was able to light up a field of light bulbs 11 miles away. However, it was never fully fulfilled due to funding and competitors. So this is my Tesla coil. It's a small, smaller compared to his three-story tall one, but it's a 15 kilovolt, 60 milliamp Tesla coil as its main power supply. It runs in from a 110 line from the house, pulling about seven amps. From the 110 line, it runs to my junction box, which just allows me to control spark gap quenching and keeps my wires neat. It then runs to a small line filter. Now this line filter, uh, what it does is high frequency, high frequency current and uh, current traveling in the wrong direction can come from the Tesla coil. And so I don't want that going back into the line. I want electricity only going one direction. So the Tesla coil can punch it back and other back reverse and send it to the house's electronics and damaged computers and modems. So I installed this line filter to help soften that and dampen the high frequencies. From that it runs to the ne this transformer. This is a 15 kilovolt, 60 milliamp neon sign transformer. It's an old fashioned iron cord transformer that for its original purpose is to power neon signs. From that it comes out at 15 kV, 15,000 volts to a Terry filter. A Terry filter was designed by Terry Fritz back in the 1980s. Uh, he was a fellow Tesla coiler who got tired of his house's electronics getting damaged by his coils. So he designed this filter to, to fully shunt the high frequency current and the uh, line spikes back into ground. What these are is each one of these is a 1 kilo ohm 100 watt resistor. So when high, high energy spikes come pushing through back to the lines, these um, resist it. They soften the vo voltage and step it down enough so my filter can handle it. Also I have metal oxide barrier resistors and capacitors in junction with smaller resistors to do also do the same. From that nothing, it's nothing special still, it's just 15 kilovolt energy. It then runs to the capacitor bank. Inside each one of these tubes is 10 capacitors. Now what they do is they function as an MMC, multiple mini capacitor array. So it gives those 40 capacitors total to function as being one large capacitor. This capacitor bank itself is already at 18 nanofarads and 40 kilovolts voltage rate. From that, it runs to the spark gaps. The spark gaps are tungsten electrodes. I have to use tungsten because no other metal can withstand the heat that the spark gaps generate. The tungsten electrodes give the chance for the spark, or not, the capacitor to build up its charge because the capacitor's job is to store electricity. So it stores it, and pushes it, stores it, pushes it. So it starts pulsing high current electricity through the system. 
And the, as it, once the capacitor is near their charge, it jumps the gap and starts oscillating through my primary coil. But to cool the spark gaps further, and to also take away ionized air, which if I have a buildup of ionized air, it's more conductive, so arcs will start forming, which are not good. I need sparks to fire. I have a cooling system, which is just a 120 milliamp AC fan, which sucks cold air past the gaps, quenching them. So from the gaps, it runs to the primary coil. The primary coil is one fourth inch refrigerating tubing. And uh, as it's going through here, it's still just 15 kV line power, but it's, it's being pulsed at higher currents from the banks and the spark gaps. As it circles through this uh, tubing, it starts, it's in tune with the secondary coil. The secondary coil is magnet wire, 22 gauge magnet wire. It's a really fine, there's about, each one of these little hairs is a section of wire wrapped around this PVC form. So, as it's pulsing through this, it starts, it's in tune with this, so it's picking up the energy. And as it's picking up the energy, it's also stepping up the frequency and stepping up the voltage. So when I get to the top, to my toroid, the voltage ends up being 500 kV, the same kind of voltage you'd have in high tension lines that cross mountains. And the frequency is also in the kilohertz range now. So I've gone from my 110, 60 hertz coming in from the house, to 500 kV, multiple, I believe 123 kilohertz broadcasting from the top. Now the voltage is so high, the electricity has to have somewhere to go. It can't just all sit right here. The voltage potential is too high. So it starts jumping to the air, as you see in the lightning. Air itself is not conductive, but it's not resistive. So at the high enough voltages, it'll start jumping to the air. But the lightning, though, it is appeasing to the eye and uh, very nice to look at. It's not the purpose of the coil. The purpose is the resonation, the stepping that 60 hertz up to the kilohertz range. By doing that, I get wireless transmission. Now this is a small coil still. So I get about a 10 foot, probably between a 10 foot transmission radius around the coil. Which you actually see with the videos with the fluorescent tube. That fluorescent tube isn't touching the coil, it's not touching the lightning, I'm holding it right here when I have it. And when I hold that, the tube is picking up the wireless energy coming off of the coil and it's lighting up in my hands. So this is my Tesla coil.